Good afternoon, dear students. We meet once again for the next topic of concurrent coplanar non-concurrent forces. Last time we had seen how to deal with concurrent forces. Let us now see, go ahead and see what happens if we encounter non-concurrent forces. Let us say that we have a system of forces. as shown over here on the slide. You have a force say F1, a force F2, a force F3, a force F4 and a force F5. All these forces are not meeting at one single point, but they are meeting at two different points. Therefore, these forces are not a set of concurrent forces. Similarly, look at this body over here. It is an angle and there is a weight hanging at the end of a rope. If you look at the forces on this body, you have a set of forces that are coming from here and a set of forces that are coming from here. These forces are meeting at this point. So, you have a set of one set of concurrent forces, but there is also another set of forces acting on this rod by the weight and the reaction in the rod. So, you have a whole body on which there are forces applied at different points. Such systems form non-concurrent forces. We want to study today how to analyze and find out the effect of non-concurrent forces on the body. These are all external forces, mind well. We are not looking at the forces which are arising inside the body. Let us look at the next slide. So, we can say that forces which do not act on a single particle, but on many particles in the body are called non-concurrent forces. In elementary mechanics, most bodies are assumed to be rigid. This is another term which we need to understand before we go ahead. What do we mean by a rigid body? A rigid body is defined as one which will not deform. Mind well, in an actual body there will always be some small amount of deformations. But currently for this topic we are not worried about the deformations. We shall study later on the deformations of the body when we go to the strength of materials. Look at this statue of Nataraja. It has many non-concurrent forces acting on the entire body. You have a force here and a force here and a force here, here, here. All these forces are somehow maintaining the equilibrium of this entire statue. Now, we are assuming that this body is rigid. The deformations do play a definite role in the mechanics of bodies, but we will encounter them when we talk about the internal forces. When you cut a part of a body and see what is happening inside, there will be some internal forces. Currently, we are looking only at the external part of the forces acting on a body. The next concept that we need to understand is the concept of moment. We have seen so far that a force has the capacity to move a body in the direction of its application. A force can also in a similar way rotate a body, not just move it in a linear or a horizontal or a vertical direction, but it has a capacity of rotating it about certain point or certain axis. Let us look at this particular body. We have a fulcrum over here. There is an entire body. If you apply certain force in this direction, what will happen? Everybody knows that this body is going to rotate. If we apply a force here, this is going to rotate. It is a very simple seesaw. The movement that is occurring is not in the horizontal direction or in the perpendicular direction. It is about an axis. Similarly, look at this body. 
you have a wheel there are certain strings tied to this wheel and when you apply certain force over here the wheel is going to rotate it is not going to move in the horizontal or the vertical directions so here comes the concept of moment the moment is applied when a body rotates about an axis mind well that this will happen only if the axis of the rotation does not intersect the line of action of the force look at this body once again the line of action of the force is here the axis of rotation is here both of them are not intersecting with each other similarly here the line of axis is in this direction and the force is in this direction they are not intersecting with each other so only if this happens if the axis and the line of action of the force do not intersect we will have the effect of moment that is rotation of the body about a certain axis so now let us get into the mathematics of moment of a force the magnitude of a moment m m is the moment the magnitude of the moment is defined as f into d where f is the force that is applied on the body and d is the perpendicular distance between the line of action of the force and the point about which we are interested to find out the moment therefore the moment of a force does not have only the magnitude but also a direction depending on the direction of the rotation produced by the force let us understand what this direction means let us look at this body now here we have an xyz body there is a point a on which we are interested to find out how this body is going to rotate there is a force f which we are applying in a certain direction now this force is going to have the effect of rotating the body about point a let us say that the body is fixed at point a due to f what will happen is the body will rotate in this direction so what is happening is there is a moment created m as we have seen in the previous slide m is going to be equal to f into d f is the force d is the perpendicular distance of the line of action of the force from the axis of rotation in this particular case this force is going to rotate the body in which direction in the anti clockwise direction now let us look at the same body the same force but a different point let us say the point is here as we have shown in the next figure in this figure you will see that i have now shifted my attention to this point now let us say the body is fixed around b and you have the same force there is a another distance of the force from the point b let us say it is d dash due to this force the body is going to rotate in which direction now in the clockwise direction so a force can have either a clockwise moment or an anti clockwise moment depending on in which direction the body is going to rotate for the purpose of calculation of all our problems from here onwards we will consider all anti clockwise moments as positive and all clockwise moments as negative let us take one example we have over here a bar a rod which is fixed at this particular point a at the other end b there is a force which is applied we are going to solve the rotation how this force is going to make the body rotate depending on the magnitude of the force depending on the position of the force the first part of the problem is find the moment of the force about a the magnitude of the force at this point is going to be 100 newtons second question 
moment of the horizontal force about a that will produce the same magnitude as in one so the second part of the problem is what happens if you have the 100 newton force acting in the horizontal direction once again we want to find out the distance from a the third part is find out the smallest force which can be applied at b such that it creates the same moment as in one and the last part is where should you apply this force in a vertical direction so that the moment created is still the same you have some distance which you need to find out and the magnitude of the force to have the same if effect of the moment as in problem number 1 let us check each one part 1 here is our point A here is our 100 Newton force this part is very simple all that you need to find out is to find out the moment what do you need you need the force F and you need the perpendicular distance of F from the axis of rotation our axis of rotation is A you need to find out the perpendicular distance of the force from A let us say this point is C therefore as you can see over here AC is equal to AB cos 50 you already have the angle of the fo uh, of the rod which is equal to 50 degrees so just putting all the values you will be able to get the distance AC AC comes out in this case to be 1.543 the moment therefore will be equal to our force is how much 100 newtons into the perpendicular distance 1.543 your answer is the moment created by the 100 newton force about point A is going to be 154.3 newton meters very simple next part what happens when the force is applied in the horizontal direction so once again what do you need you have the force you need the perpendicular distance from the axis of rotation so F into the distance d will give you the moment about a how do you find out the distance bc bc is equal to ab sin 50 you already have all the values ab is equal to 2.4 sin 50 is 7.766 you have the distance now bc the force should be such that its moment is 154 the same moment is to be produced as in part 1 so the moment is already known to you the distance is known to you can you find out the force your horizontal force has to be 88.91 to create the same moment next part of the problem what will be the smallest force that can be applied to get the same moment in order to get the smallest force we know that we need the small the largest distance if the same moment is to be applied moment is equal to f into d if this is to be smallest this is to be the largest and therefore we will take which distance which perpendicular distance we know that this is going to be the largest distance so we will apply the force in such a way that the perpendicular distance is equal to the length of AB that is 2.4 meters so your unknown force which is minimum will be equal to 2.4 FM into 2.4 the moment is already known as 154.3 this will give you the smallest force if you check with the other forces which we did previously see part 1 the moment was 154.3 force was 100 Newton part 2 the moment was still 154.3 the force was 88.9 and this is the smallest force 64.29 the last part of the problem is where should you apply this force so that still the same moment is produced but you have a 
vertical force and the value of the force is still to be found out as 250. You apply a 250 Newton force, you are knowing that the force is 250, you do not know where should it be applied on the bar. You already know one value m. This is known, this is known. Can you find out d? So, we go about solving this problem. Your force is 250, its perpendicular distance is x and the moment is 154. You can find out x. x is going to be Point six one seven from A. But we need to find out where exactly on the rod it is to be placed and therefore we will find out from X and the angle 50 the distance where the force should be applied. That comes out to be AC equals 0.96 meters from A. So, in this way we can find out different values of forces and distances or in case you, you are required to find out the value of the moment about any point. Let us take one another problem. This is slightly more complex. Here you have an entire system of rods A, B, C, D. There are two forces applied at D. One is a 10 kilo Newton force and the other is a 3 kilo Newton force. You are asked to find out the moments about point A due to these two forces and about C once again due to these two forces. Let us first of all take the moments about point C. Let us draw the free body diagrams for C. This is the rod C D. On the rod C D as we already know there is a 10 kilo Newton force and a 3 kilo Newton force. What we will do is instead of finding out the perpendicular distances, we will resolve the 3 kilo Newton force into 